Well, praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hold on just a second. All right, well, connection, sorry about this. I love technology, and I when hate it, technology. When it works. That's right. Let's try that again now. Praise God. Let's all stand in the house of the Lord. But the wonders of the cross. Amen. That cross brought us freedom. And so we're thankful for that today. Let's just raise our hands and love the Lord. Thank him. I thank, thank you, Jesus, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us, Jesus, providing for us. We bless your name, Father, in Jesus' name. Somebody said, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Uh, all of our uh, men and women who served in the military, would you just raise your hand in here in the, in the auditorium? Up there, you don't see Sister Mary Bond, she's up there, she serves in the National Guard, I believe it is. And everyone else that's in here, thank you. Let's give them all a hand for their service. <laughs> Praise God. That last, some of them gave the great last devotion, they gave their life for our country. And others find themselves away from their family members just to make sure that our freedom stays intact. Praise God. Look at somebody and let them know I'm happy you're here today. Hallelujah. You know, we wouldn't be able to have service if nobody showed up. <laughs> have you ever thrown a party and nobody came to your party? That's a sad situation if you have, and I'm sorry for you. <laughs> have you ever gone to a party you weren't invited to? That's an interesting situation, too. Now, if it's a good friend and you weren't invited, you just know that they overlooked you, and you just show up. Maybe they overlooked you. Who knows? But it's just good to be there. So you've come tonight to a great thing. Or this morning, you've come to a party, and it's the church. Where we come and we celebrate not just our nation, but also our freedoms that we've been given by God. Uh, the Bible says that you have been freed from sin. It teaches that. And there's a freedom in that that I want to talk about this morning. If you'll turn your Bibles to John chapter 8. I'll just read one scripture. Verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Let's read it again. Everybody read it with me together. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Let's pray. Lord, I love you. I thank you for your word, Jesus. I thank you for your people that are here, our visitors, God. We ask the Lord to have your way in this service as you already have. And in the next few moments, God, speak to our hearts, our minds, and our spirits in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm preaching today on freedom's hope. Freedom's hope. Then said Jesus to those, those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? They forgot that they had been in bondage. They had been in bondage in Egypt, a long, long time ago. And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. The servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. There is a necessity for us to find freedom today in a world that is quickly trying to take people's freedoms we are living in an age in which we need to establish what freedom really is freedom is not the choice to go at the age of 21 to a liquor store and buy liquor 
It is the fact that you are free to make right or wrong choices. You have that choice. You've been given, it's a release, a liberty that we have. She is a statue called the Statue of Freedom. And she is bolted to the top of our nation's capital there in Washington, D.C. And uh, it's interesting how that she came to be, the Statue of Freedom. They were told or they, they, they hired someone to design it. And um, his name, I believe, was Thomas Crawford. Thomas Crawford was, he was commissioned to design this sculpture that was going to be put on top of our nation's capital, the Congress. I think it's 19 foot, 6 inches tall, and uh, he began to design it. It's interesting in his design, in the middle of the process, the design, he would turn in his sculpture picture or his, uh, his drawings, and one man whose name you might remember by the name of Jefferson Davis was a little incensed because he put on this, this statue a liberty cap. And he was upset because he said the liberty cap would give too much hope to those who were enslaved in the nation. You remember Jefferson Davis was a southern slave owner, became the president of the Confederacy during the Civil War. And so the man changed it. Instead of putting a liberty cap on it, he put a liberty helmet Years went by, that was in 55. Around 1950 or 1859, the, uh, the person who had been commissioned in Italy to make the molds, to pour the cast bronze into, he decided he wanted to make a little more money. So he basically extorted the government and said, uh, I'm not going to pull these apart unless you pay me some more money. So there sat the, the, uh, the plaster in a meal by a man named Mills Foundry. And while he was there, nobody knew how to take care of this. Nobody knew how to pull the sections apart without breaking it. They were all fearful that it would be ruined. So finally, the owner of the mill, he just looked at his slave, a man by the name of Philip Reed, and told him, he said, I, I want you to go ahead and pull this apart and do it. So very carefully, with skill and precision, over a matter of time, this man by the name of Philip Reed began to pull it apart. He and other slaves working with him, they separated the molds, and then they cast the five sections in bronze. Can you imagine the irony of that? A slave working on a statue called Freedom. He's working on that statue. And finally, they put those, the bronze sections together, and on December the 2nd, 1863, the last section was bolted together. And there stood the Statue of Freedom, triumphant in war and peace. Freedom always will have her day. You will always find that freedom will come to you. The interesting thing about the story is that while that last bolt was tightened, Philip Reed, if he was there, I don't even know if he was in, uh, on the grounds that day, but if he was there, he stood there a free man. Because the Congress had freed all the slaves in the District of Columbia on April the 16th, 1862. Could the hope of freedom pushed and forced Philip Reed to do a careful job of this? I don't know. Perhaps freedom as an ideal moved him on the path. He was enslaved bodily, but his mind and his soul were free. And maybe he was thinking, I'm not free yet, but one day. One of these days, I'm going to be free. What does it mean to be free? It simply means that we are not bound to anybody else. We are free to do the things that we want to do. We are unrestrained. We can choose right or wrong. We can do, choose to do good by people or to do get bad by people. We can choose to treat one another correctly or incorrectly. Freedom is just the ability to choose to do what you want to do. If you don't want to get up on Tuesday morning after having a long weekend and you want to call in sick to work, you can do that if you want to. It's not advisable, but you have the freedom to do that. Slaves don't have that freedom. They're bound by it. They're driven by their enslavement. They are 
they are chained up and they don't have a choice in what they do and even what they say. If they talk back to the master, they might get beat down. But freedom is liberty. Liberty is freedom. There is a liberty that occurs in the house of God when people begin to worship God because our freedom propels us to worship Him. You might be here today and you feel bound up and hemmed in and hindered. Maybe you got something going on in your life that you don't know how to overcome. I want you to know this morning, there is freedom beyond chains. There is freedom beyond physical bondage. And that freedom only comes by Jesus Christ. The Lord has given us freedom this morning. You look at the book of Romans. The book of Romans tells us that we were bought out of the marketplace of sin. That our bodies, our souls were bought by Him and He freed us. And we're supposed to glorify God in our bodies. There is a freedom that He gives us because when we became children that were born again, we were no longer slaves of sin, but now we are the sons of God. And Jesus said, whom the Son has set free, is free indeed, and you're, 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 a, you're bound a slave, he was telling those Pharisees that day, you're bound by it, but, but when I free you, when the Son frees you, you're free. There's something about being able to walk with the peace of mind and joy in your spirit. There's something about being able to know that I, I'm going to make it, everything's going to be all right, and I don't have to worry about what happens tomorrow because I can live today in freedom. Israel was given a freedom. The Bible plans the release. It's a foreshadowing in the Old Testament of the freedom that we have today. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, and verse 15, At the end of every seven years thou shalt make a release. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth aught unto his neighbor shall release it, he shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother, because it is called the Lord's release. Right. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt. Yes. And the Lord thy God redeemed thee. Therefore I command thee this day, this thing today. Every seven years they were supposed to release those slaves that had been a slave of them that were of the tribe of Israel. Every one of the twelve tribes, every seven years, was supposed to be freed and let go. That was the plan of God because He didn't want them to remain in perpetual enslavement. God doesn't want you this morning to remain in the slavery that you're enslaved to. The bondage and the chains of sin that wrap themselves. Maybe it's not sin. Maybe it's a weight that you hold on to that you're not letting go of. God wants to free you from that. He never planned for you to be permanently enslaved to those things that hinder you from growing in Him. But Israel... They didn't keep the law of release, the law of freedom, and they were judged for it. Don't be judged today by not releasing others from your anger, your hatred, or your upset nature because they hurt you. Uh, the Lord doesn't tell us that we are to just hold on to bitterness. It says, when ye stand praying, forgive or release somebody. How many have held a grudge? Amen. I'm glad there's several people that are honest in here today. I've held grudges. Been mad at somebody. I wanted my rights. Bless God, you don't know what they did to me. Yet the Lord said, release them. Free them. Let them go. He told Israel several centuries later because they had never kept the law of release. They had never kept the law of freedom. He told them, he said, you have, not marked, you have not hearkened to me in proclaiming liberty, everyone to his brother and every man to his neighbor. In fact, what they had done in Jeremiah had come to him and said, listen, if you will keep this law of release and let all the bond and all the slaves go, I will keep you from the wrath of Nebuchadnezzar and you will not fall into captivity. And so they all they all released all the slaves. They released them and let them go. And then things looked better. Nebuchadnezzar left and went back. And they thought, whoa, 
They wiped their forehead off, and then they went and caught all them slaves and put them back in bondage. How terrible to be free and going all happy one day, and the next day you're back in the same ship you were in just a few months before. So many times people, they say they forgive, they say they release, or they want freedom, and they repent, and they find freedom at an altar, but then they leave this house. And they go their own way and something comes up in their life and they find themselves back in the gutter again, back doing the same old things they used to do because they have never really released, never really forgiven, never really let it go. And I come to ask you today, if you would come to this altar and let it go and put it in the hands of Jesus and just leave it there. We used to sing a song that said, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Leave them there. Take your weights and take your chains and take your hurts and take your wounds and take them to an old altar. Kneel down and say, Jesus, I can't handle this anymore. Please take it from me. Take it from me. Why don't you say that with me this morning? Just close your eyes and raise your hand and say, Jesus, Take this burden from me. Take it, Jesus. I release it to you in the name of Jesus. And so the Lord said, You've not hearkened unto me in proclaiming liberty, every one to his, his brother and every man to his neighbor. And then he says, Behold, I became a liberty to you, saith the Lord, to the sword, to the pestilence, to the famine, and I will make you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. You don't want that kind of freedom. Freed from God, liberated from God, liberated from His protection, freed from Him who can keep His hand upon you and keep you in every situation. You don't want that kind of freedom. Let me tell you today, I will say it again, you don't want to be freed from the hand of God's protection. That's why you need to release some things to Him today. That's why you need to be free in your thinking and free in your mind and free in your spirit and let people go in your mind that hurt you a long time ago. Let your own self go because you've held bitterness and anger against your own self for things you did a long time ago and that's why you can't get any further than you are right now because you're living in the past, staying in the future or staying in the present and your future is way ahead of you can't get to it because you cannot release yourself you cannot release the past and I've come to ask you today please let it, go. let it go that slave could have said you know what I'm not going to do that I'm going to make sure this statue is ruined he could have done that he could have just nonchalantly walked up there one day and they said there were little splits in it little uh, cracks in the, in the molding, and he could have not been careful. He could have decided, no, I'm going to run this thing because it's a mockery. It's supposed to be a statue of freedom. Here I am, I'm not free, but he didn't do that because he had a hope in the freedom that was before him. You have a hope today. It is the hope of the freedom of God to release you from your past and to release you from your hurts and to release you from your wounds. But you have got to give it to Jesus. True freedom, it happens when we allow ourselves to let God work in our life. Isaiah 58, 6, Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? So true freedom happens when we are released from the chains of wickedness, of wrong, and of iniquity. I remember the old song said, when my burdens rolled away. I remember when I gave them to Jesus, and he took them from me. I, I know that having served the Lord now for over 42 years, there's been some times, many times, along the way that I've messed up. And I've allowed burdens to come on me. I've allowed myself to be enslaved to sin. And I've had to find an old altar somewhere and kneel down and say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, forgive me. Lord, I commit not to do this anymore if you would just help me. And then that old burden that I was carrying that was keeping me down and defeated my spirit and unable to move forward into the great future God has prepared for me, it rolled all away. And there I stood free. Liberty. I understand that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
And there's freedom. And there's freedom today in this house. There's liberty for you in this house. We're released from all the chains that hold us down. Then the heavy weights of sin and the burdens of the past are removed when we allow ourselves to be freed by God. God wants us to be free today. There are people in here that are broken. I know you look like you got it all together. I've learned, someone taught me this a while back. You don't know who's sitting in your pews. You don't know what they're suffering. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know that they're crushed and bruised and discouraged and oppressed. And they're struggling. And it took everything they had to get to church this morning. We don't know that. We, on the outside, they all look great and wonderful and fantastic. But on the inside, they're screaming out, I just want to be free. So a kind word, a smile, a gentle expression of gladness that they're in the house of the Lord. You don't know how much that does. A, a, a hand on somebody's shoulder. I'm glad you're here today. That may be just what they needed to get through another tying, terrible day and ordeal. And maybe that kindness is what will help break the yoke that's in their life. Break that oppressive bond of enslavement. The Lord doesn't want you to be enslaved today. He wants you to be free from your sin. Like the verse said, I just read in the very beginning, He whom the Son hath made free is free indeed. He provided for you a way to be free. The pastor talked about a little bit, we're talking about water baptism this morning. He died at Calvary. He is, his blood covers your sins. He became that substitutionary sacrifice. And with his blood, he purchased every evil, wicked deed, thought, and imagination of your heart, the iniquity that's in, in you. He did all that at Calvary so that you could be free in this moment, in this day, and in this time. And while we spent time celebrating July 4th and what it means, let's really celebrate what real freedom is, and that is the freedom to one day go to heaven and see the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're aiming for. You can be imprisoned and still be free when you have Jesus. But if you don't have Jesus, you're not free, even if you have all the money in the world and you can buy anything you want to, because there's something inside of you that needs to be released, needs to be forgiven. Break every oppressive bond of enslavement. What enslaves you? What thoughts? What habits, what practices, what past hurts, what is it that gets you down, what is it that keeps you from moving forward, you find yourself doing things sometimes, you wonder why did I do that and then you remember, oh yeah, I developed that habit from a long time ago, that's what you need to be freed from release it to the Lord he's the one this morning that can free you from everything Luke chapter 4 Cain and Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The Lord wants to deliver you today. The Lord wants to give you liberty today. And you might be saying, well, Brother Kuntzman, I've been in church a long time, and I, I don't know that I have anything I need to be freed from. Well, when was the last time you worshiped God with abandon? When was the last time that you would sit in the form of the church and you really begin to weep as God's Spirit moved upon you because you were touched by His Spirit. You began to express praise in a way that you hadn't since you were newborn in Jesus. Maybe some things have attached to you. They might not be sins. The apostle said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. There are weights that we attach 
or they get attached to us in life that hold us down and keep us back from worshiping the way that we really know we ought to worship Him. You see, a free people, a people full of liberty, they're uninhibited in their worship. They are not held back and held down. They don't let things like dignity get in the way of them. They just lift up, they worship their hands, they raise their hands, they jump, they run, they shout. They don't worry about what anybody else thinks. And well, I'll take the moment to say right now that when you're worshiping God, that's between you and God. You're the way you worship Him, the way I worship Him may not be, may be totally different from each other, but the important thing is that you raise your hands or you worship Him in the way that you worship Him. You speak to Him the way that He speaks to you and you begin in that communion with Him. But when you got weights, they hold you back. They happen in relationships with other people. Things get in the way. They block the dam of love. They, they dam up the, the flow of love between each other. They, there's not quite that communion that you used to have. And that's how it is with Jesus. When we allow weights and even sins to get in our life. And we're not freed. But Jesus said, I have come to free you. I have come to preach deliverance to the captives. Recovering of sight to the blind. And to set liberty them that are bruised. Them that... See, the bruising is that iniquity, that thing inside of you that nobody else knows about. There are people, as I said before, sitting in this auditorium that have bruises so deep and nobody sees them because they're covered by their clothing, their spiritual clothing. They put on a mask so nobody really knows what they're going through. I'm speaking to you today that you can be free. You have hope in the freedom that God gives. You don't have to wear that shroud and cover those bruises, but you can lift up holy hands today. In this house. Well, he closed the book, gave it to the minister, and sat down. I like that. That means he preached sitting down. <laughs> and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began to say to them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Today is your day of hope, it's your day of freedom, it's freedom's hope. After his freedom, Philip Reed changed his last name. He still kept the pronunciation, but he, spelled, he, he changed the spelling of his name because he didn't want to be tied to that old Philip, the one that was enslaved before. And so he changed it from R-E-I-D to R-E-E-D. And I want to tell you today, when you come to Jesus, you get a name change. When you come to Jesus and you're baptized in his name, he changes you. You put on his name. You become part of his family. You become adopted into this family. And you don't have to worry about it. You get all the rights that belong to any member of this family when you're baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost. He puts his seal upon you. There's freedom in that this morning. To walk into the room and know a servant can't just walk up to the master's house and walk in there and sleep anywhere he wants to or get in the refrigerator, but a child can go in the house, he can sit on a, across the chair, he can go in the kitchen and open up the refrigerator, pull out anything out of the refrigerator he wants because he's part of that family. And you today, if you've been born again of water and spirit, you're part of the family of God and you have access to all the freedoms that belong to you because you are his child, you are his son and you are his daughter today. Today, you can have a name change. All you need to do is to allow yourself to free, to be free. It's not just about repentance. That's a change. That's important. I can repent of my sins and move forward. But it's also about being baptized in his name and having those sins covered. Yes. And then being filled with his Holy Ghost and being sealed on that day that he's coming back for you. And that seal gives you great refreshing this morning. And that refreshing is a type of liberty that you can have in the Holy Ghost. And so if the Son shall make you free this morning, ye shall be free indeed. I was much younger than I, than I am now. <laughs> and I was in a situation where I was bound by something that I couldn't get rid of. I was fighting it every day. Didn't know how to get over it. All I knew was it was eating me up inside. Every time I saw a certain person, boy, it's anger would well up inside of me. I want you to know that anger feels good. It's like an intoxicant, a toxin, whatever how you say that word. But it gets you feeling good. 
You, you enjoy your anger because you feel you're, you're, you have a right to it. And I kept on feeling that anger, letting it well up inside of me, letting it well up inside of me. And that anger turned to resentment. That resentment turned to bitterness. That bitterness was about to turn into hate. And then my friend, my good friend, he pulled me aside. He said, Steve, let's talk. And he began to talk to me about the situation between us. I'm so glad my friend came to me. He knew that I had ought against him. I wasn't mature enough to go to him, but he was mature enough to come to me. And he asked me, what have I done? Because I want to fix this. And then I realized instantly, the instant he said, what have I done? I realized there's something happened in my spirit. I realized he hadn't done anything to me. Not really. And I had to release him and let him go. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but if you've got that going on in your life, you need to release that situation. You need to release that person and let them go because if you won't release them, the Bible says that if you won't forgive somebody, your old heavenly father cannot and will not forgive you. If you want freedom, you need to live in forgiveness and release people so that you can be free and live a free life in Jesus. Would you stand up for me this morning? For he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I don't know about you, but I want to be free this morning. I desire to be free this morning. I, I want to continue to be free. I don't want any weights to get a hold of me, anything that's bound me. I don't be bound by those things no more. I don't have to be bound by those things no more. I know it's a holiday weekend. I know that when we get on a holiday, we're all forward to tomorrow and even later on today, what we're going to do with our families. But right now, right now, why don't you just close your eyes with me. Raise your hands if you want to and just say, Lord, thank you for your freedom that you give us. Thank you, Lord, that we have the truth today and we know that it's going to make us free. <coughs> thank you, Lord, we have the Son today, God, and who the Son set free, He's free indeed. Thank you, Lord, for the liberty that we have in you today, Jesus. We accept it, God. We bless you for it, and we thank you.